The zombie virus has swept the world, turning most humans into zombies. Apart from becoming bloodthirsty, they still retain a trace of human consciousness. The security guards at the airport are still working as usual. The janitor still has his mission, but that only lasts for a while. Because eventually, they will become inhuman bonies. The zombies will still be able to communicate with each other as humans do. Although their vocabulary is limited, and they make more eye contact, they can still understand each other. Especially when it comes to food. Hungry. City. Hmm. Because they share the same goal, they also choose to travel in groups when they go out for food. Like the zombies, the surviving humans in the quarantine zone also go out occasionally in search of supplies. And they are the ones the zombies are hunting. It's not a good day for humans, who are also trying to survive. Almost everyone except Julie has been killed. When a zombie eats a human's brain, it inherits the memories of the person it has eaten. After eating a man's brain, this zombie named or has his memories. It also possesses the woman in the man's heart. The only survivor, Julie. Looking at this familiar yet strange woman in front of him, R packs up the uneaten love brain and then slowly approaches Julie. Julie throws her flying knife and hits R, but the damage was like an itch to a zombie. And it didn't stop R. Julie was so scared that she fell to the ground. But instead of hurting Julie, R called out her name in a deep voice. A dumbfounded Julie was dumbfounded on the spot. Seeing other zombies approaching, R rubbed some zombie fluid on Julie's face. The liquid was perfect for blocking out the human scent so the other walkers wouldn't notice Julie. This method worked well. She can walk safely among the walkers. Not only did he fill his stomach, but he also picked up a girlfriend for nothing, which even the security guards envied. He then took Julie to his luxury jet flat. Julie burst into tears of fear. R fixes his handsome hair and tells Julie that he means no harm, but he was a zombie after all. And he couldn't say a complete sentence for half a day. The way he tried to speak made Julie even more scared. R also saw her fears and left the plane to leave her alone. To get to know the girl better, he took out the brains he had just packed and ate them. After getting some of her boyfriend's memories, R returns to the plane again. He tried to be less intimidating and to prove his feelings in action. He even picked up a record and played one of his favorite songs. The song represented R's language. Julie's eyes were filled with shock. What did the zombie want? The next day, Julie told her she was hungry and asked him to go out and find some food. R agreed without hesitation. Little did he know that Julie was trying to distract him so she could escape. She naively thought she could get away. But before she knew it, she was met by a walker. She had to hide under the tires of the plane. But the zombie's sense of smell is unusually keen. And they soon pick up the scent of humans. The zombies were closing in when her suddenly appeared behind her. He warned Julie not to try and escape. As it was dangerous out there and then rubbed more of the zombie fluid on her face. Although the human smell was removed, there was no way to escape the walker's eyes. As a precaution, R taught Julie to imitate the movements of a zombie. With R's correction, Julie was able to get away with it. But she was hungry, so R took out the food he had found and a bottle of beer he had kept for years. After this experience, he gradually let his guard down with R. They opened up and talked, but when Julie offered to leave the place, R still refused, because it was dangerous out there and her would take her back when the right opportunity arose. Julie had no choice but to agree. For the rest of their lives, they had a sweet life together. They sometimes experienced speed and excitement on the runway of a plane, sometimes listen to a record together or play some fun games. They were like a couple in love. Julie seems to have forgotten that her is a zombie, since zombies don't sleep. R is always watching Julie at night, because it makes him feel at ease. But the comfort was about to be shattered. One night, R suddenly realizes that Julie has disappeared. He went out to look for her, and zombies surrounded Julie. She fights back, but there are too many of them, and M catches Julie. In the nick of time, R came to her rescue. For this girl, he even fought against his kind. This was a move that baffled his good buddy M. He thinks that zombies should eat humans. R was about to say something when he suddenly saw a bonies not far away. Faced with such a vicious zombie, R had to run away with Julie. But bonies don't give up their prey easily. They managed to escape this one. But when they got outside, they were blocked by three more bonies. This is certain death. And the bonies are slowly approaching them. You can still count on your brothers no matter where or when you are. Julie resisted but had no choice but to trust him for the moment. But just when they think they're safe, they're blocked by another group of zombies. But these walkers are different from the bonies. As they watched them hold hands, the zombies seemed to understand what was happening. So they didn't give her a hard time. They just drove off in their sports car before the bonies caught up with them.
It was raining heavily, and her wanted to say something but didn't know how. They eventually arrived in a small town and found a house to settle in for the time being. There happened to be a camera in the house. Like lovers, the two took a picture of each other. As they slept, R put a watch on the table, and he confessed that Julie's boyfriend had been eaten by himself. Julie was not surprised to learn the truth. She vaguely sensed her boyfriend's presence in R's body. In response to R's apology, Julie chose to remain silent, a relief for R who speaks his mind. He would not have slept, but he had a dream. In the dream, R saw Julie talking in an orchard with her boyfriend and a friend. He approached Julie and asked her if she could be his girlfriend. Julie doesn't answer. Suddenly R woke up from his dream. He got up to see that Julie had disappeared. She's gone, after all, and it was a much easier moment for R instead. After all, humans and zombies were never meant to be together. Julie returned to the human quarantine, and R was ready to return to his life. The world has one more sad zombie, but why did he feel cold in the heavy rain when he was obviously a zombie? Suddenly, M appeared ahead with a group of zombies. It turns out that shortly after R left, M saw a poster of hands holding hands. It reminded him of R and Julie holding hands and brought back memories of his former life. The other walkers gradually regained their memories under M's guidance. They were all affected by their feelings. Their long dead hearts were beating again. This is a precursor to becoming human again. And Boney smelled something different. There were traitors among the zombies. And Bonies drove them out. Bonies blamed everything on R and Julie. The Bonies are now hunting them down because their love for each other has affected the entire zombie horde. For Julie's safety, R decides to go to the human quarantine, but he was so weak on his own that he asked M for help. And so, with R and M leading the way, the walkers set off. He tells M to wait outside while he sneaks into the quarantine area to find Julie. Using Julie's boyfriend's memories, he found a secret passage to the quarantine zone. Under the cover of his hat, R was not discovered, and his body was changing. Before long, he was in front of a luxurious villa. It was Julie's home. Little did he know that Julie was a rich woman. After waiting for an unknown time, R finally saw Julie on the balcony. Julie was surprised to see R. Julie opened the door and accepted R. She even hugged him. She could feel R's body heat. R also told Julie that many of their walkers were changing too. He also told her that the Bonies were after them. Hearing this, Julie decided to go to her father, Grigio, because he is the security chief of the quarantine zone. But they didn't know that the Bonies were swarming the quarantine zone. And Julie's father didn't believe her either. R had no choice but to confront him in person. Although he had put on his makeup before arriving, Grigio immediately knew that R was a zombie and pointed his gun at him. He didn't even listen to R's explanation. Julie's friend stopped Grigio just in time as he was about to pull the trigger. They took the opportunity to leave. They arrived at the stadium, which was already crowded with walkers. They were all semi-infected people who were changing. Suddenly there is a horrible hissing sound from above. It turns out the bonies have arrived. As the glass shatters, an army of bonies descends from the sky. A civil war between zombies and zombies ensues. Their target is R and Julie. They have no choice but to flee. And the human army arrives at that moment. The dumbfounded crowd was instantly confused by the scene before them. How did I shoot? The humans seemed to have an answer in their minds and joined the battle with the Bonies. R and Julie were on their way to escape when a group of Bonies stopped them. They pushed open a door and found that there was no way out. Seeing that the Bonies were closing in, R chose a romantic escape. With insufficient cushioning, R hit the bottom of the pool. Luckily, Julie was fine. She then dived to the bottom of the pool and pulled her up. And he regained consciousness. After a life and death escape, they kissed each other lovingly. R's eyes returned to their human form. Suddenly a bullet hits R. It was Grigio who fired the shot. He didn't approve of them being together. Julie tries to explain, but R's wound bleeds. Knowing that a zombie can't bleed, Grigio's face was shocked at sight, and his inner thoughts changed. The soldiers all drop their guns, and the human camp accepts R. At the end of the film, the semi-infected and the humans are on the same side, wiping out all the bonies. Bonies, unlike ordinary zombies, can no longer turn back into humans. Those left behind were starved to death because they could not find food. The semi-infected begin to learn about human life. The city begins to recover as before. M is brought together with Julie's friend because of an umbrella. R has become completely human. They witness the wall being blown up at sunset. This also signaled the end of the zombie era. Love can change the world. Thank you for watching. And remember to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.